Now, I've spent more time in this room than anywhere else in the universe. Uh, I realized that years ago, um, and it hadn't changed since then, but uh, what was the question? Uh, it's one of the, the freer places you can find. Um, it reminds me a lot of Amsterdam. Um, you're free to do what you want without anybody, uh, well, if they do judge you, fuck them. They, uh, it don't matter. We're all in the same boat here, so they, they nobody say anything. Uh, my name is Eric Myers. I'm a bartender at Mount Royal Tavern. Been here for somewhere between, I don't know, 30 years, maybe. I was supposed to be a music teacher, was the plan. But I came here to study. Well, I started drinking here, and then I started working the door because I was hanging out here so much. And so they said, look, you're here every night standing by the door anyway. We'll, we'll give you $20 and all you can drink. All you got to do is card people and clean up some tables every now and then. And I was like, yeah, all right, I'll do that. The first time I got drunk was on a Boy Scout canoeing trip when I was 14. Uh, Boone's Farm wine slipped in a cow pile. And, uh, all right, good night, or good afternoon, good morning. Uh, for five years, I drank rye with a little bit of water in it and a cup of water, and for every one I would tell people, I don't know, one's the cure and one's the curse. I don't know which is which, but you'd match the water with the alcohol and never get a hangover. That's all a hangover is, is your dehydrated body hating you. I went in the um, Irish pub down the street, and I was sitting there, and they had delicious food. They had pool tables. The, the uh, bartenders could had could choose what CDs they wanted to listen to the the uh, beer was a little cheaper I came back here and I was telling this to this other bartender Dawn doesn't work here anymore and uh, I was telling her all this and she said and you know what they got managers I was like, oh, never mind so that's here we are, we are in control of the ship Pile of shit. Yeah, this place, it's a cultural corridor, and it's not exactly going to be like any other bar. We have all kinds of people that come through, and, you know, our ceiling being done by uh, alumni Joe Helms in 94, people come by just to see this as well. And he actually moved down to South Carolina, became a muralist. But when they, before the building next door was extended, he would go up on the roof and he rolled out the canvases to see how it was coming along. And he was also doing it before they let out a lot of good imagery of the Sistine Chapel. And when they went to put it up, they realized they actually had to cut it. And so that's why it's actually split and there's a little bit of a measurement. So that's also why that spot over there is blank. A lot of people always say, how come you don't get it cleaned? And it costs a lot to get it cleaned. And because most of those stains are nicotine and nicotine just gets in there. so. That's a nice nicotine patina. Yeah, I came here for college and then fell in love with Baltimore. It happened my junior or sophomore year. So we were coming back from Thanksgiving, and you get off 695 on the 83. There's that weird orange glow ahead of you, and I went, "Cool, I'm home." Shit, when did that happen? And I've been in Baltimore ever since. I, I can't explain it. It's just, it, it, it's, it's, you know, home to me. It's my heart. I can't imagine living anywhere else. It's grown on me a lot. And then um, i had been working at the Institute for a while, at the art store, which used to be next door. So, the, you know, the, I knew everybody that worked here at the time, because I'd come over here in the mornings to get coffee. And uh, one day they asked me, 
you know, said, Ben, we need a backup bartender. If you want to talk to the boss, you know, maybe you can get some extra hours and make some more money. And I was like, okay. And when I came in to ask him, he said, yeah, um, you know how to count? I said, yeah. He says, okay, you're hired. <laughs> that I did for about a year. And that's when I ended up becoming a football fan. Because I was, the Ravens were new, and it was, that was the year they won their first Super Bowl. I think it was back in 2000. But uh, beginning of the season, I was like, can you guys keep it down? I'm trying to sleep to, uh, what the fuck does that call mean? And by the end, I was hooked. Which sucked, because my shift ended at 6. The Super Bowl comes on at 6.30. They do a big food spread. And back then, they were deep frying turkeys out back, making french fries, stuff like that. By the time I got off, there was nowhere to sit in the bar, because it was so packed. I went home with a plate of turkey and fries and watched the game by myself. It was so much fun. I loved that game. They won. So yeah, I've been an avid football fan. Dyed my hair purple. But uh, in 2012, when the Ravens won their second Super Bowl, I was getting grief from the Oriole fans. Like, why isn't your hair orange? Why isn't your hair orange? So I started dyeing my beard to make up for it. I got so tired of basketball that I started making a pot of chili. And I'd put it out and we'd give it away every Tuesday night. And I put up signs, you know, come in and watch hockey with free chili. You know, I always had, you know, Caps versus Lightning, Caps versus Penguins, you know, stuff like that. And it was just so I could hopefully get some hockey fans in here and not have to have basketball on both sides. So I could, you know, put the basketball in the back, watch the hockey up front. And we did that for, I've got, I've been probably cooked the chili for like 10 years and I've got a reputation for it now. But, yeah, I don't see as much of it now that I'm down to one day a week after the trauma of having bunion surgery, which ruined my life. So I was in this walking boot for, like, eight months or so, and now I have a herniated disc in my lower back that they can't fix with surgery. Well, they said they could do a surgery, but it would not necessarily uh, make things better. It could make things worse. They can't guarantee a result. I was like, well, it doesn't sound like a surgery to have. Um, I get through the day shift because of uh, those Thermacare heat wraps, so I have constant heat on my back. I deal with back pain on a daily basis. I'm on meds, and when I don't take the meds, it's much more severe. But yeah, because I, after I got out of the boot and I was finally able to walk around, the pain didn't first start right away, it started later. So I tried going back to work at nights, and I couldn't cope because you know, my back would get out and I'd be walking around the bar like this. I mean, you know, if I needed a bottle off the bottom shelf, I'd have to get a customer to come behind and grab it for me. It was horrible. So slowly after the boss got sick, he's like, Ben, right, you can't keep coming into work and then calling people to take over for you. We've got to work this out. Now I'm down on that one shift every Sunday. Now sometimes you get people coming over here. I remember this one couple. She, oh, it wasn't a couple. It was these two girls and one guy, and they came in. And the guy was familiar, I hadn't seen the women before. And she, the woman, first woman walked up and she said, is there any way in hell I can get a drink with more than one ounce of alcohol in it? And I said, hell yeah. And the guy started laughing and said, I told you, I told you. <laughs> They'd been over at the brass tab having food. <laughs> and we told him, you know, if you want to go get food and come back, that's fine. You know, we don't care about that. Order people, we got a box of menus, people can order food if they want. Uh, it's a walk of life, you know. I know I'm gonna come here, there's gonna be no nonsense. It feels like a Baltimore bar. Like, there's nobody trying to one-up each other. There's nobody just trying to like show off. I feel like it's a bar for the people. Like, you come here to drink, you come here to talk. That's it, you know? How would I describe the tab in three words? Eclectic, uh, unpredictable, and relaxing. All right. We got a bartender earlier, so this <laughs> shit. <laughs> I mean, you, he works it. Right. The job is always different from the observer. Oh, <laughs> Like, 
Elliott. It's only has three different owners in its history, yeah. I guess. But the previous owner was more like a, like a lesbian cigar bar in here, I'm okay. told. And there was this woman that worked here who would smoke cigars and put like all her labels of her different cigars around. This was a heavy, heavy smoking bar for many years, and it is drastically different. Like 2010, they made a law you couldn't smoke in the bar anymore. And I was actually happy because I used to work the door, and I would have to empty the ashtrays. And the ash, let me tell you, the ashtrays at the Mount Royal Tavern were disgusting. They were about this big, in the middle of every table, and they had everything you could imagine in them. I guess more people came that wouldn't have when it was a smoking bar. Some people were very happy. Oh, I could never come in here because it was horrible and da da da. And then, um, you know, eventually we got used to it. And then I'm actually thankful because I had to work behind the bar pregnant and I could have never done that had it still been smoking. Or I guess I could have, but it wouldn't have been a good idea. <laughs>